τον πρόεδρο της Ελπέν, τον κύριο Τρίφων. Let us welcome the president of Ελπέν, Mr. Τρίφων. And Mr. Ιατρίδης, pray forgive me, is the executive director of Hellenic Ports Association. Let me also welcome... Ε, καλώς σας βρήκαμε. Mr. Ψιόλας, Πιστιόλας. And Mr. Τσάουτος, Τσάουτος. Ε, αντιπρόεδρος. Who is the vice president of Ελλάδικά μας, Mr. Πιστιόλας, and Έψα. Indeed. Indeed, there is a new context for the country. Indeed, for the first time ever after the Marshall Plan, according to the actuarial study that we performed, that we saw that uh, the potential leverage of uh, 100 billion can have uh, made a higher impact than the Marshall Plan on the Greek economy. And this gives new dynamics, uh, attracts new investments, and uh, outward looking uh, policy. And under your leadership, the Greek Development Bank part um, uh, acquires a new identity. The um, investment, the, the Greek Investment uh, Bank uh, injects new funds. And for, 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 for the first time ever, there is a, star, a strategy for startups uh, with an innovation um, center and uh, a policy for the development of spin-offs and a very good uh, uh, junction where there is a startup uh, ecosystem uh, with the uh, companies uh, growing the first unicorns like program to viva wallet now all this shows major dynamics and um, this is uh, where And in this panel, um, the dynamic entrepreneur, Greek entrepreneurship is fully represented. Um, these are the people who can actually become the leaders uh, locally, domestically, uh, but internationally. The question is whether inflation pressure, uh, the increase in energy cost, and uh, the standard problem that we have had with the previous financing tools, like the absorption rate, um, given plus the asymmetrical new uh, reality could be an opportunity, but with uh, shorter economic cycles and asymmetrical threats and risks. Now, could this hamper our success story? First of all, If any minister of development around the, uh, the globe said that they wouldn't be, they're not worried because of the energy crisis, they would be full. Of course, I'm worried. And the inflationary pressures, as they emerge after the restriction, uh, the lifting of uh, the lockdowns, uh, has been uh, longer than uh, have been longer than expected. Therefore, this is also an issue of concern. Now, whether this concern is so large that it's going to uh, inhibit the progress, uh, my answer is no. Mm, the Greek economy is um, on a has embarked on a journey at a fast rate, so I believe that we're going to achieve the 5% uh, target without any uh, without fail. Um, If uh, th th there's a flow in the economy, plus uh, the RRF uh, funds and the NSRF, you, you, we would uh, get there even if uh, we had attracted no, even if we don't um, attract any new FTIs. But this is not my main concern. My concern is to do much better than expected or than uh, uh, dissipated. And, and in the long run, setting the, the foundation in order for this to last elevate grace for instance that we set up why did we do it um, because it wasn't enough to set up Corby. you had to create a standard a, a stable environment where everyone uh, were, uh, would know who is who and because when I first joined the ministry when I first took office at the ministry of development and I asked the ministry of finance I would like uh, um, in tax incentives for startups they said no why no because they didn't want 
because uh, the General Accounting Office estimated the cost of these uh, tax incentives uh, at a very high amount. But when we elevate Greece, we set up and we said what would set ups would be, and war, and the measures were not abstract, but abstract. But uh, they only pertain to these 450 uh, startups. Uh, on the platform, then the ministry said yes, because uh, the cost was much lower. So um, with Elevate Greece, uh, we created a space in the economy where we can have applied uh, <coughs> sectoral, applied uh, politics, the same uh, policies, excuse me. The same is with the Globac uh, that uh, we implemented, one of the first initiatives that we uh, took in uh, September 2019 before the pandemic. Um, it was announced by the Prime Minister. We decided that the pharma industry is uh, one of our competitive edges. We have got one of the largest organized uh, um, uh, industries in the European Union, pharma industries and industry, and we wanted to have added value and experts uh, in order for this to develop um, on sound um, grounds, <clears throat> given the crisis they've uh, been through the past uh, 10 years. So we're not about fixing or correcting the figures, fixing the figures, but uh, we want to create the environment, the context that will uh, nurture uh, growth. Now, Greece has got uh, traditionally has got uh, expensive energy. The energy exchange uh, in the European energy exchange today, Greece is below the um, uh, below average. But usually we're expensive. We've got expensive uh, energy cost. I don't want to beautify things, you see. I don't want to embellish reality. Um, can we design a, a policy that will lead us to lower energy prices? Yes, we can for an for a uh, instance, uh, renewable energy sources are not only eco-friendly, they're much uh, lower. Net measuring that we are legislating as a solution for industries, and uh, we're building a plan there. This cannot have the, the transition not happen overnight. You're not passing a law on Monday and then implementing on Wednesday, but we've got a specific plan so the forthcoming years to be competitive in energy as well. Thank you, Minister. Mr. Pizziolas, uh, President of Eladikamas, uh, and we're not only talking about agri-food uh, and processing, but uh, you are representing sound, uh, very dynamic Greek companies. What about challenges and opportunities that uh, present themselves uh, via the strategy and there's a strategic plan by the government? So we're talking about financial instruments. That's a challenge, but also the adversities out there, and I'm talking about reforms and the absorption rate of funds. So thank you very much. I'd like to thank uh, the NET team for inviting me and the Presidium. We are kindred spirits. Eladikamas is a group of 71 Greek companies that uh, are operating in Greece, uh, and they belong to Greeks. Uh, I'd like to say a couple of things uh, before moving on uh, to mention that what is happening worldwide of course, affects uh, the entire planet. Uh, so we're not uh, in on our own in this difficult uh, time. That's the first comment. Now, in relation to energy prices, we're going through a difficult situation right now. We believe that things uh, can change. Uh, the procedures can become more flexible in order for us to reduce electricity cost. Uh, and we see that REST, uh, while it's still at low rates in Greece, the part of the, the REST uh, in the energy pie should increase. I think we all need to do something about it and step up our efforts. So this also has a negative impact, particularly when the electricity prices we have in Greece are higher than those in other Western and European countries, which are potential, if you like, competitors in many products and services, mainly products. So. Situation is difficult. The situation in 2022 is difficult. Uh, it's a perfect storm because I represent a greener as a company in the agri-food sector. There are significant problems when it comes to raw materials and climate change. Uh, the climate change has negatively affected uh, the previous year, 2021 was a bad year in relation uh, to uh, yields, uh, crop yields. So 2022 will be a difficult period for all of us. Uh, but we Greeks are resilient. We have the will and we have the uh, mind uh, to uh, 
be able to rise to the occasion so we can play the role of the devil because we know that the devil is busy in the high wind. So I'm saying this speaking from experience and having a being operating in Greece for many years. So there's a problem in penetrating foreign markets. Why am I saying this? We don't have a one-to-one -one contact. So it's relatively difficult for Greek companies to create favorable conditions and to be able to position oneself in other countries. Of course, Eladikamas, uh, these are products uh, produced uh, by uh, purely Greek companies. This is our wealth, but in order for us to increase uh, the revenue, the public revenue in Greece, we have to increase exports. So the fact that we cannot easily acquire contact with our potential clients and open up new markets, this is something that creates additional difficulty. However, we are optimistic. We believe that we can be cunning like Ulysses. So we are a very clever and improvising Greek businessman, and we can increase our hold abroad. Mr. Tsautolu. Uh, you are from EPSA. Uh, so, Mr. Tsautos, could you actually answer the same question and t give us your take on this issue? So, good afternoon. Let me also thank in turn the Presidium and for the invitation. Uh, after what was mentioned by Mr. Pistiolas, uh, our President, uh, Pistiolas, excuse me, I would like to talk about uh, the uh, power of synergies, synergies among Greek uh, SMEs. And this is something that we had uh, cast aside for many years. But I believe that uh, this new year, 2022, which is before us, requires synergies. And uh, we're talking about uh, SMEs in particular because they are the uh, backbone of the Greek economy. And they are very many. So there are problems that arise. Uh, we're living at uncertain times. Uh, I don't know when this uh, situation will end. The best way to deal with these difficulties is to get together. So companies that have common characteristics, for example, the companies that are in the Eladikamas group, in the Eladikamas family. So we need support not only uh, in Greece, but also abroad. We need to improve our outward orientation because it's much easier for 20 companies that go together to one retailer. It's uh, much uh, easier for them to land in America, in Australia, in Scandinavian countries. It's much easier to do it together than to do it alone. It's difficult for you to knock on a door abroad and uh, having this door being open to you if you're on your own. What about the incentives provided by the RRF for mergers and acquisitions? Do you think uh, that uh, this will uh, allow for more mergers and acquisitions, thus rendering them uh, more competitive? Because we know that Greek SMEs do not have the capacity to be more uh, outward looking and to be able to go to uh, foreign markets. I think that uh, this is a useful tool, the um, instruments provided through the RRF. And I think we need to look at this uh, in a positive way. Many Greek companies need to put their thinking caps on and do something. Mr. Trifon, uh, you are a company uh, that is innovative. Uh, there is a surplus value. So the question is, how can PEF, uh, which is uh, outward looking, what about what will happen in the um, future? Do you believe in the future? And what about the wager? What's at stake? So thank you very much, uh, Mr. Vasilopoulos. Uh, thank you uh, for the invitation. We invest uh, in uh, uh, Greek scientists. Uh, we uh, invest uh, in uh, the uh, pharmaceutical companies. Uh, the Greek uh, Panhellenic pharmaceutical industry has a program of 1.2 billion. We have uh, many projects uh, underway for the next five years. So many things are in the pipeline. And uh, at the same time, uh, we're very happy to see that foreign companies have come to invest, uh, most of them in big data, but some also in uh, clinical research. And this is something that is very positive uh, for the uh, pharmaceutical sector in Greece. So I believe uh, that uh, we have a future ahead of us. Of course, I'm talking about uh, trying to be sound and strong. As I said, we have an investment program uh, of 125 million and 900,000 employees in the pharma industry in Greece.
So let me talk about sectoral policies and how important they are and what we need to do in the future. And I think that we also need to see what will happen with the funds from the RRF, but also any other um, projects, for example, Horizon, the development law, and so on and so forth. Mr. Yariavis mentioned this already. I've been looking at this matter as a whole. This is the most successful PPP, successful PPP in Greece in the last few years. So what exactly happened is that uh, companies were able out of their own money to pay 8% of the clawback they have, and they can offset it with investments. So we had 40 investment programs in 2020 uh, from uh, Greek and foreign companies of over 200 million. And the multiplying factor is three. So we have new clinical studies, investments, uh, investments in infrastructure, in uh, production facilities in Greece, etc. So this is a characteristic example of what we can achieve. So what does this show? This shows that political leadership uh, had very quick reflexes. This is nonpartisan. It's very good because it was supported as a program by everybody in parliament. And uh, the Maximos Mansion uh, uh, actually and the Ministry of Development signed it uh, very quickly. There were three co-competent ministries. There were legal advisors, different services. We had the uh, Yayet, General Secretariat for Energy and Technology. Everybody uh, worked together. They worked quickly. There was a lot of pressure that was put to bear. We actually begged, but the system paid off. And this is a very good result. This means that if there's a sectoral policy in place, if there is good collaboration, uh, using arguments and not just uh, coming up with proposals, but based on a well-documented uh, plan, we can do better. So sectoral policies are key, in my opinion. Secondly, another important matter that we have to deal with in the coming years is the following. The money from the RRF uh, must uh, be uh, based on the added value they can create in Greece. I mean, every project, of course, we have digitization, we have protection of the environment, uh, we have energy. These are our uh, cross-cutting issues, but in general, there must be an evaluation system and we must see where the money must be spent. And of course, we have to be flexible, as flexible as ever. Another matter that we deal with, and Mr. Yuriyadis is well aware of it because he played a leading role in finding a solution, is uh, the map of regional subsidies. So what do I mean by this? In order for us to have incentives in production, I have to relocate my factory and take it to Thrace, Kozani, etc. We know that at a different time period when we had the time to plan, this could be possible. But now we're at a time of crisis. So we have had 10 years of disinvestment. There's been a brain drain. The unemployment rate was 25%. So we need to find fast track solutions. I believe that certain incentives will be provided in Attica as well. At least I hope so. But I believe that some solutions need to be found on the basis of negotiations. I'm talking about money from the RRF, uh, which can be uh, very well spent. And if we do not invest as the pharma industry, don't expect uh, foreign companies to do so and uh, to take the initiative. So I believe uh, that uh, we know that the jobs uh, in the pharma industry are well paid uh, and the situation is brighter than in other sectors. So there's a lot we need to look into. We're on the right track. And I repeat once again, we will be judged on whether the public uh, sector and uh, the companies, the private sector, will help uh, achieve uh, the RRF program in the best way possible. Well, you touched upon three matters. Firstly, since we have a successful practice minister, and uh, this is something that you started, it was at your own initiative, so maybe this could spread to other sectors following the same logic, i.e. subsidizing investment and supporting investment. Well, I've already cited two examples of sectoral policies. I talked about startups, and I also talked about pharma industry. The same will be done for R&D in any case. And yes, there may be other sectoral policies as well in the coming months, if this is to our benefit. And I forgot to say something in my speech. Uh, let me just say this. 
now. So what is the most important thing of all, in my humble opinion, what we have achieved in the last two and a half years in government is for the first time all the services of the state and all our financial instruments are coordinated. Uh, everything is part uh, of uh, one uh, strategic plan. So the Pisarides, uh, uh, if you like, uh, committee, which is our next, uh, is our five-year plan, uh, this was delivered uh, to us. Uh, it uh, was endorsed uh, by all the competent ministries, Ministry of Environment and Energy, Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Labor. So all the instruments, be they the development law or the NSRF uh, or the RRF, we all have the same goals. It's not that one ministry does one thing, the other ministry does another, and one cancels out the other. What we have is working in sync. We have one goal in mind. So the goal is for Greece to become more competitive, for it to reduce the energy cost, for us to acquire skills, and I'm talking about the manpower in Greece, and we keep talking about high unemployment, but we know that one of the main problems is to find specialized human capital. So this is like an oxymoron in a country with high unemployment for companies not to find the right people, the people with the uh, right qualifications. So we're working um, on all of this at the same time in order for Greece to be able to move ahead uh, and to speed ahead. Uh, it's something that will happen. We're working on it. You talked about something very interesting. You talked about human resources. And uh, after the pandemic, uh, this is a totally new model so in the past, we had uh, people who were interested in making a career. Now life is their priority, and work must be part of uh, the uh, their life. So we have uh, a very important issue. And what we have is now we feel that there is a shortage of staff. We need people with the right skills, and it's difficult for us to find them. So let me tell you. At in the, uh, we have a lot of money for reskilling and upskilling in the RRF and in the PA agreement. But also, let me tell you that the pandemic, in my opinion, at least in the case of Greece, may have become the turning point. Uh, we are now uh, uh, happy because we have many opportunities. So in our own microcosm, in the microcosm of Greece, we have an acceleration of digitization, not only of the state, but also in the private sector and the private economy. So the progress in the last two years is huge. It would have taken 10 years before the pandemic to achieve the same results. That's number one. And number two, it gave the feeling to everybody, to many people, that working remotely is not the end of the world and it's not necessarily a bad thing. Greece uh, can actually claim uh, staff uh, who will choose to work uh, from Greece uh, for their companies via the internet. Uh, and everything, we have the non-dome, the silver economy, the golden visa. So here we've seen uh, that we are targeting uh, this uh, audience. Uh, this audience is becoming ever larger and we can attract all these people. They can work from Greece via the internet and I think that we have a lot of advantages. It's much better to work uh, from uh, Athens and Vula and Kavuri, which are by the sea, uh, than in Brussels and I think everybody understands why. So we're going from digital nomads uh, to uh, utilizing the ports and also uh, tourism, development in tourism. So I have two questions. The question is, what about privatization? What's happening with the privatization? We see that uh, the um, ICARP uh, has uh, more extroverted policies. It's trying to uh, develop uh, all the companies under its aegis and to create an added value. And uh, uh, we also see that in Alexandropolis and Igumenitsa, but also when it comes to conceding uh, the port activity, uh, the port operation to Kavala, and what about increase in tourism? Do you think that we can improve the situation? Meaning, uh, are the ports enough for us uh, to deal with this increase uh, in uh, people from cruise ships, for example, and uh, things like that? Thank you very much. 
Can you hear me? I'd like to thank you, Mr. Steinkor. Congratulations uh, to ENE, the Hellenic Entrepreneurs Association. I'd like to say that this is the best uh, forum. We uh, represent uh, the 13 port authorities of Greece, 11 public and two private right now. And uh, we also have uh, many municipal port funds, uh, Katakolo, Mykonos, Santorini, Rhodes, etc. Now, uh, let me answer your questions in relation to utilizing the ports. We, uh, what have we learned uh, from uh, the uh, utilization of Piraeus and Thessaloniki ports? So we've seen the investors entering the ports and spending money to upgrade infrastructure in Piraeus. We have an investment of over one billion by way of investments. This was injected into uh, the local economy, but also in improving the infrastructure. And in the port of Thessaloniki, we have similar amounts invested. So in Piraeus, uh, we're waiting for Pier 4 uh, to start operating in Thessaloniki Pier 6. So we see that uh, the uh, paradigm, uh, the model rather, that's been used uh, by uh, the Greek state is successful. In the first months of 2022, we're waiting for the binding offers in relation uh, to the concession or rather the sale of majority share, 67% in the port of Alegumenica and Alexandropoli, and the concession, as you mentioned, of uh, the commercial activity in uh, the uh, Kavala uh, Philip II uh, uh, Pier. So we see that in all these activities, we have many companies involved and there are many joint ventures. For example, in the case of Kavala, in the final phase, we have four joint ventures. In the case of Alexandrupoli, another four joint ventures. And in Ecumenica, seven joint ventures. In Heraklion, we have stepped back there, but we've seen an expression of interest by nine companies. So what does all this mean? It means that there is a lot of interest, huge interest. So the procedure run by the HIRDF will be very successful and the consideration will uh, be uh, close to the real value of these ports. A lot of these uh, ports have a different geostrategic, geopolitical importance. For example, Alexandropoli or Igubinica, which has a good flow of uh, traffic. And of course, we have the connection of the country to Western Europe. Kavala has uh, its own uh, geostrategic advantages and energy advantages like Alexandrupoli, and of course, there will be a part of the port that will remain under public control. And of course, we have the port of Heraklion, which has developed very well in uh, the cruise ship sector, but in other sectors as well, for example, the commercial sector. And in the coming months, we will also have utilization of other ports like Polo, Volos, Corfu, etc. So the cru crucial question here is what will we actually do for the local communities? What investments uh, will be implemented? And we believe, and you know very well, Mr. Stangos, uh, that uh, we will have a game changer, a disruption. There will be a leap forward. So we believe that we stand to gain a lot from this procedure. We have achieved a lot uh, through uh, the uh, agreements uh, for uh, Thessaloniki port and uh, Piraeus port. But uh, for local societies uh, that uh, are smaller, the benefits will be even greater. We're talking about new jobs, but also other levels as well. Now, let me move on to the other subject uh, that you asked me to discuss. Yes, uh, we support Greek tourism in a decisive manner, and we believe that in 2021 we had a good year, particularly when it comes to cruise ships. As you know, the Association of Hellenic Ports is the agency which has statistics until September we had over 1 million passengers which is a very high number because the cruise ship uh, the cruise ship sector is highly sensitive when it comes to the pandemic the public health crisis so we had a good rebound we believe that in 20 so in 2021 in Thessaloniki we had 21 calls and we believe that we'll have 50 to 52 uh, calls in 2022 so the prospects are bright now, so from then on, we believe that 2023, we will ha go back to normal. We'll go back to the levels of 2019 and maybe even have better results than in 2019. And let me talk about the huge challenges we face as a sector, as a port uh, sector, and where we need uh, finance funding and where we ask for the support of the state in our efforts. We believe that we will have their support uh, through the PA and through the RRF. 
So the first objective, or rather the first uh, objective, is to achieve this digital transition. The second one is the green transition, and the third one is upgrading the infrastructure and provided services. In the area of uh, digital transition, our aim is to achieve and converge with the smart ports module where we'll be able to monitor and follow up through digital twins. We'll be able to create, in other words, an image on the base, based on which we will maximize the, res the port resources. We'll also monitor the, the flows of the various uh, stakeholders, be it cargo pas or passenger passengers. Uh, we will see the entry and exit um, of um, uh, cargo and in terms of security. We will be able to maximize uh, the security level at the Greek ports. Uh, with regard to green transition, there's uh, a debate going on. There are major changes uh, taking place uh, in Europe. And I'm sure you know that uh, we are actively participating in uh, policy design. Uh, otherwise, we would have to comply with rules and regulations that uh, would uh, be imposed upon us. So it's uh, crucial to be present across the European fora and take part in them. Right now, there is this regulation, very briefly, the regulation on uh, alternative fuel inf uh, infrastructure for ship by 2030 in, for, in Greek ports. And the other a third target is uh, to upgrade infrastructure. Infrastructures, um, there's a very ambitious uh, NSRF uh, program, 130 million in Greek islands, 200 million for um, mainland uh, Greek ports, so th most, but we can benefit a lot from uh, the uh, RRF. Uh, the minister, along with Mr. Plakiotakis and Mr. Pirakakis, are looking into a program, into a, gr a smart ports program. So it's a matter of. Uh, putting this into good use in order to increase um, the surplus value and for the, the added value of the ports. The Greek pharma industry, can it uh, play a leading part globally? Do we think, because there are two issues there. This is the first. And second, um, are you, you were the first who raised this issue earlier that you invest in Greek and, uh, researchers, and it is true that uh, we have got uh, res good uh, Greek researchers. It, uh, but the issue of um, merchandising uh, research is not as ripe in all industries. So do you think we can uh, play a leading part uh, across the, around the, the globe uh, in terms of uh, Greek pharma uh, products and R&D, and do you see any shift in uh, the paradigm? Well, first of all, we already play a part, and right now, 37, 38 comes of which 25 have got uh, major exporting activity, uh, helped us um, resist uh, or survive during the crisis. Obviously, it's not uh, easy. it wasn't easy, but things are positive. The messages are positive for the future. The human resources are critical of coefficient, and um, this is something we have been we work on a daily basis, very high on the agenda of NA and seven in the pharma industry. We have got a lot of programs where we train and retrain our people in uh, critical sectors for the future in collaboration with the schools of medicine, uh, chemistry, and others. Then we need to change the culture, uh, the university culture, in terms of uh, copyright and um, uh, uh, intellectual property. So can we have uh, spin-offs uh, in the Greek um, universities so that um, they, uh, 
they can operate in the future. These are all issues moving ahead, and we need to move move faster. It's not easy, but uh, a lot of steps have been taken recently in the past couple of years, much faster and many more than in the past uh, than it had been the case ten years ago. And um, we need to work with the universities. Uh, third, synergies and collaborations with the Greeks abroad is critical, is key to us. Very glad that in the U.S., we're very lucky that in the U.S. we've got experienced uh, successful Greek um, players in life sciences, uh, biotech, and the uh, pharma industry. There are a lot of synergies uh, underway, um, and all these people want to help their country. And uh, three or four companies uh, who are ahead uh, will give uh, this, will showcase how collaboration between Greek companies and uh, People of the Greek diaspora will create a better ecosystem. And this is all true and very positive signs. We should not forget that in the fourth fifths of the planet uh, where we operate, there is uh, protectionism for local uh, industries. So, as Europe, we have to lift the counter incentives. The European uh, industry has to become a bit more flexible so that uh, production can come back and scientists can come back to European territories, become more independent from third countries. This is a, lo- a major d- debate in Greece. On the other hand, we should not forget that uh, the contribution industry in the GDP is uh, lower than the average. Uh, services are good, but if you want to have a future and uh, uh, stable uh, jobs f- uh, and an industry that can work with the academia, the um, industry will be that player. So 1.5% has uh, has to become 15%. So, and um, although there are ministries that in the past couple of years um, mo- have been moved faster. There are things that have to be done even faster, and there are externalities that need to be dealt with because it is crucial for the industry to grow fa- more. Minister, we would like your comments on what you've heard. You recently passed uh, the law on uh, spin offs, and uh, you uh, cut a Gordian uh, uh, tie there. Not. Um, well, in this, uh, in the current administration of Gerks Mitsudakis, in July 29, 19, 2019, it was decided to move the General Secretariat of um, uh, uh, Research and Technology to the Ministry of Development, and back then we were criticized severely. Um, and in my de- uh, statements, I said that we made this uh, decision because we want to link research with the market. And this was the key reason why this happened. This political uh, choice was made, and this uh, it seemed quite awkward back then. Now, two and a half years later, Greece, you must have seen that Greece, uh, uh, that had uh, ranked uh, in the low, at the lowest places, has climbed up 10 places. 10 positions in only two years, and um, the fast, uh, our growth rate is faster than anybody else's. So the moves that we have uh, made, uh, the measures we have taken, the um, uh, business angels, uh, the um, the spin-offs, uh, uh, joining uh, research universities and the market, all these uh, lead in this lead or rather move in the same direction and most importantly the society has changed because you can't impose such changes top down the society needs to be willing for the changes to happen our law on spin-offs 10 years ago would have driven people in the streets for demonstrations. Ten years later, nobody even objected at the parliament. In the parliament, this shows that the Greek society has matured. Uh, this is a different country. 
And the reason why I'm very optimistic is that because we're in an excellent government, of course we are, yes, but I shouldn't be saying so myself. It's because, mostly because, the society is, is supporting these changes. When I was a parliamentary representative of the New Democracy Party in 2014, in the discussion about the Hellenicon project, the only thing I, had to, I could say is, why are we selling off Greece? And when I became a Minister of Development in 2019, the only criticism that I received is, why has it taken me so long? Why has it, why it has taken us so long? So we're talking about different country, different society. But so people in Greece, for the first time ever, want to see private investments the first time ever for the first time ever they're telling us why aren't you attracting more FTIs for the first time ever trade unions are not uh, striking and not going on strikes and uh, we have the society pushing us for more innovation um, and this is this makes me very optimistic one last thing yes in Greece Uh, this is a discussion has started and um, has been uh, has commenced about industries and indeed it's a big thing for Greece to be able to get a share of uh, the industries that will return from Asia to Europe because uh, it is uh, dead certain that some of them will return uh, because in the 80s there was a major deindustrialization of Europe and Greece even more so. So uh, European industries, the US industries took their production plans to the move their production, relocate their production plans to Asia. Why back then? because all the industries were uh, labor intensive and uh, the labor cost was, uh, the difference in uh, the labor cost was huge back then. So uh, it was a totally different business plan. Now, currently, these conditions have changed. Might, uh, might be 1,000 or 1,200 uh, the salary of the European uh, uh, worker, but uh, the, the, that of the Chinese 600 is not the difference, is huge. And also, the industries are less labor intensive, like, thanks to robotics and technology. Therefore, there, is, uh, there are lo- less incentives to. Um, uh, have uh, your business uh, in Asia and given the high transportation cost uh, it might not be uh, to the interest at all and the pandemic actually shocked the European community uh, the uh, society because they realized that all of a sudden during the pandemic at a m- crucial time they had suffered a shorty they suffered from uh, a lack of uh, gloves face masks and other critical materials because they were dependent on Asia and this Uh, well, Greece, uh, uh, Europe may be shocked and then unshocked and decis- uh, very fast, but decisions are not made fast enough. Um, so this question was raised, especially uh, with regard to the pharma industry. And the response I got uh, was, well, that was, was not triumphant anyway. This new environment is um, emerging, and if meanwhile we build the right uh, environment in Greece, then part of this um, return, industrial return, might concern Greece as well. We might get a share, so we we will reverse the uh, uh, course of the 80s. In this uh, context, we've included the national. In- Council of Industry has been part of our policy and um, the entire government, all the ministries are interlocutors of uh, the industry players and um, we will come up with a plan that will be agreed upon by all of us with specific timeline and milestones, milestones telling us what we should do and by when. And you raised a very interesting issue. First of all, the maturity uh, and the change in uh, society, which will take us to the next uh, question uh, regarding the change in our mindset. But before that, Mr. Pizzioles, I'd like to and Mr. Tsaut, I'd like to ask you the. Uh, agri-food um, chain, the agri. 
food industry has it utilized this entire uh, research potential that we have had and do you see an opportunity there with regard to Europe Horizon uh, as an additional financing tool in addition to RRF and uh, the NSRF? We in El Avica are always honest uh, and we call a spade a spade. Uh, we don't mince our words. Historically speaking, I don't think that medium-sized enterprises have uh, made good use uh, of uh, these instruments. Of course, there are some companies that have taken advantage uh, and uh, have done very well. But uh, I speak uh, as a representative of exclusively Greek middle-sized companies. And in order for us to be strict on ourselves and more Anglo-Saxon in nature, I think that there's still room for improvement. Uh, we can uh, use uh, the uh, R because uh, D, we miss D, we miss development, and we also need to focus a lot on R. So the two new tools, uh, meaning from the RRF and the PA agreement, uh, can be made use of. We have to uh, move quickly. Speed is of the essence, faster than in the past. And uh, this means that we have to focus on having added value products uh, because this is where the wealth lies. This is where the surplus value lies. This is how we can improve the Greeks' uh, living standard. So it's not that we're going to be selling watermelons abroad. No, we have to start uh, selling uh, another product uh, that that may contain Greek uh, watermelon, but also other ingredients. Uh, so um, let me just dwell on this. Uh, the question is uh, that we have two things, uh, meaning we have 9 billion people. That's the forecast for 2050, the global population. We won't be able to feed all these people. This is why agri-food is so important. And over 1 billion people worldwide uh, suffer from obesity due to the way they eat, uh, their uh, nutrition isn't that uh, good. Uh, so we have new products, uh, we have alternative proteins, and so on and so forth. So here we need the input of innovation. So do you believe that Greek companies, because this is what we're talking about, do you think that Greek companies are trying to take advantage of the situation? Are they trying to invest uh, in, in uh, all of this? Uh, and we know that there's an opportunity because uh, we have uh, the three of the four helices uh, of the triangle of knowledge. Uh, we have uh, industry. We have uh, all other things as well. Three out of four ingredients are there. Uh, so this requires, of course, uh, collaboration, of course, with the Ministry of Agriculture. Now, in relation to the global market, you quite rightly described it. What we need to take advantage of as a country is that we are the cradle of the Mediterranean diet. But... This is something that we need to uh, capitalize on. So we need to have products uh, from uh, Greece, uh, Greek raw materials, but the final outcome, the final result must uh, be plant-based uh, products, uh, plant proteins. And I'm talking about one billion of obese uh, consumers. So for the nine billion, which you mentioned, uh, meaning the population by 2050. I have no answer on that. Uh, so agri-food Greece uh, must uh, have Greek raw materials. And I'd like to say that Greek raw materials are very good. We're talking about uh, Greek uh, crops and Greek cereals and Greek uh, products. So plant protein, it also uh, helps uh, achieve uh, the desired outcome. Now, we know that when it comes to uh, red meat, uh, we import a lot of red meat. So in order for us to be self-sufficient, particularly when it comes to beef, uh, it'll take uh, some time and effort. Uh, so we can help uh, the obese people by producing uh, plant-based uh, products. I think most of what I wanted to say has already been said. Uh, let me just remind you what happened in the past, and I'm talking about olive oil and the mistakes we made back then with the olive oil in Greece. 
For all the states, uh, we only have Italian olive oil. That's uh, the only thing they know. And actually, it wasn't Italian. Uh, it was Greek, uh, in fact, meaning we used to send a bulk of Greek olive oil to the Italians. They used to put it in a nice uh, glass bottle and sold it at a much higher price all over the world. And now we're trying to make up for lost ground. Maybe they blended it uh, with other uh, oils. Possibly now the quality, uh, their quality was based on the Greek olive oil, and now we're trying to uh, sell Greek uh, quality olive oil at higher prices. So we need added value. That's very important, as was mentioned by Mr. Pistiolas, and we should stop. Uh, giving to others in bulk what we can actually standardize uh, and uh, we can then reap the benefits thereof, the added value. Last question. Right now we have turned page. There is a clear-cut strategy regarding growth. There are specific policies in place, and this is recognized by the markets. It's uh, recognized uh, by the Greek uh, businessmen, and uh, we actually see that there is investment appetite uh, in defiance of the pandemic and in defiance of uh, the other adversities uh, that uh, may arise. Uh, but uh, there is a structural issue here, if you like, a structural issue in Greece. And I'm talking about uh, working with others, the cooperation model. We often quote Israel, and to a certain extent, uh, we use uh, this paradigm. But uh, uh, there is uh, no Israeli businessman in any country in the world who doesn't support other Israelis. And of course, they may support uh, their competitors, any other stakeholder from Israel for any job, any sector of the economy. So can we do the same in Greece? Can we win this wager? Because we're open to cooperating, uh, at least in words, but not in deeds. And I think this is the only matter that we need to look at uh, when uh, we look at the growth model. So do you think that uh, society is now mature? It thirsts uh, for uh, growth. Uh, so can we have a good cooperation model? Uh, let me just cite an example. When Eladikamas uh, was born, there were six, seven companies initially, and among them was EPSA and Lux. So they tell us we're competitive companies. We say we're not competitors. Uh, we are rivals, but it's a matter of friendly rivalry, sibling rivalry. We are in Greece. Uh, soon we will have 9 billion, uh, meaning global population. So we're really nothing. Greece is a tiny country. So it's not a question of uh, whether EPSA and Lux uh, will enter the shelves of supermarkets in Sweden or America. It mean, we are trying to open the door. We have to put our foot in. We need to open the door a little bit, not wide open. And if we can do this together, so much the better. In the past, it was a joke to think of two Greek companies joining forces, but now it's not the case. We're working together, and I think that if we do this, we will become stronger and we can develop new products in Greece and go abroad as well. So things have changed, and I think this is the only way forward for Greek companies. I agree with you. This idea that our DNA doesn't allow us to cooperate, well, I don't agree with that. So businessmen uh, want to do what's in their interest, and uh, right now it's in their interest to have these cooperations and clusters. We want to win a bigger percentage from global markets, uh, and we see that even companies in Greece that are considered big for Greek standards at a European level, they're not big at all. There are very few Greek companies that are truly big. And previously, there was a question addressed to Mr. Pizziolas, if SMEs have an access to bank lending. What do we mean by SMEs? What's the definition? I consider myself uh, small and medium-sized, but I realized when I became <coughs> development that I wasn't even small, let alone a medium-sized company. 
But in order for us to be able to acquire a share in the global market, which is our intention, we need to cooperate with one another. I could give you some good examples of cooperation in the pharma industry, since we have Mr. Trifon with us. And I think that we will do well in this sector as well. I'm very optimistic. Let us welcome Mr. Staikuras, who came from Parliament. There was a discussion about the budget, but he's here. So take the floor, Christos. Let me thank you all very much uh, for this discussion. Thank you, Minister, and thank you to the audience for staying with us.